Hello everyone, this is Sir D and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to talk about the next topic in exploratory carpentry, which is check condition of tools and equipment with the subject code TLE underscore IACP7 slash 8 MT dash 0 C dash 1. Are you ready to learn? I hope that you are because this is an interesting topic that you can use in your future. So let's get started. Our objectives for this lesson are the following. First, segregate defective tools from functional ones. Second, label defective tools. And lastly, third, report the list of defective tools. Now let us discuss the classification of hand tools. It is necessary for us to learn this particular concept so that we will be able to determine what tools are functioning and what are not. First in our list is the group of the measuring tools. In every TLE course, we discuss classification of tools and measuring tools cannot be removed. It is always part of our lessons and of the work processes involved in technology and livelihood education competencies. Included in the measuring tools are the following. The pull-push rule, which is a flexible tape that it slides into a metal case and is used to measure irregular and regular shapes. Next to it is the ruler. A ruler is 12 inch or 1 foot rule and it is used to take simple measurements. And then we have the meter stick. The meter stick is used to measure a workpiece. Price square comes next. It is used for squaring, measuring, and testing tool used to check adjacent surfaces for the squareness. And then lastly, for the measuring tools, is the caliper. The caliper is used to transfer measurements from the rule to the work. Next group is the testing tools, and it has four distinct tools. The tri-square, which is mentioned earlier, it is also a measuring tool used in squaring and testing the squareness of a wood. Steel square, which is next to it, is used for framing, used to mark out uh, square work and to check angles. It is also used in the construction of roof framing and large furnitures. Spirit level is a tool used to test vertical and horizontal surfaces. And lastly is the plumb bulb. It is a tool used to test vertical and horizontal surfaces similar to that of the function 
of the spirit level. Marking lining tools is the next group. It includes five distinct tools. The pencil, which is used to mark or lay out lines. The marking gauge, a wood or metal tool consisting of a beam, head, and a point. It is used to mark a line parallel to the grain of the wood. Then we also have the chalk line. It is used to establish a straight line on a surface. Divider comes next. It is a tool with two metal legs used to lay out an arc, circle, or step of division of a line. And then lastly, for the marking lining tools is the compass. It is used to scribe arcs and circle in a metal or wood. For our next group, we have the edge cutting tools. This classification of tools includes four. The chisel, which is used to trim and shape wood. Plane, used to obtain a smooth and flat surface. Next comes the spoke shave. It is a small plane-like tool from irregularly shaped objects. And the cabinet scraper, a rectangular piece of steel with two cutting edges used for working on flat and curved shapes. The next group that we're going to discuss is the tooth cutting tools, which includes the different kinds of saw. We have first the crosscut saw, which is used to cut wood across the grain, while the rip saw is used to cut the wood along the grain. Then we have the back saw. This particular kind of saw has a metal back and plywood. And then we see the compass saw in the middle. This is used to cut a regular shape either in large or small boards. Then a strange looking kind of saw that you see below is the turning saw. This is used to rip cross and cut curves in lumber. Next to it is the coping saw, a U-shaped saw used for cutting irregular shape in small boards. And lastly, the dovetail saw. It is similar to a back saw, only smaller, with a straight chisel type handle used to cut very fine joints. Here we have the boring tools. This includes three, which is the auger bit used to make hole in woods. The expansive bit. This one is used to drill holes of various sizes in wood. And lastly, the drill bit. This is used for boring holes either in metals, woods, and even plastic. Now you see holding tools. It includes the C-clamp used for holding together pieces of lumber while you are working. The bench vise used to hold any material or tools in place. And the bar clamp used to hold large boards or wooden frame together while assembling or wing parts together. Selenius tools. It includes the oil stone used for sharpening edge, cutting tools such as the chisel, file used to smoothen metal and wood surfaces, 
paintbrush. This is used to apply paint or varnish on wood surfaces. A nail set is used to drive the head of nails lower than surface of wood. And the saw set, which is used to bend the upper half of each tooth to one side or the other to form a set. Portable power tools. Remember that in order to use this, you must have electricity. It includes sander, a portable power tool used for sanding furniture pieces to make the wood smoother. Rotor, used for shaping surfaces and edges of furniture parts. Jigsaw, a power tool used primarily for cutting curved or irregular shapes similar to that of a coping saw or turning saw. Circular saw. It is a power saw used for many types of cutting, particularly on large panel stock or wood. And lastly is the electric drill. This power drill is used to drill holes in various materials to perform a multitude of tasks. Of course, in order to keep us safe from our work, we need to make sure that we wear our PPE or personal protective equipment. And this is part of the things that we need to check for defects to make sure that it is still functional or if it could be replaced. It includes goggles used to protect our eyes against flying debris and harmful liquids in the workplace. Ear protector used to protect our ears against high frequency noise, especially when we're working with our power tools. A face mask is necessary. This is used to prevent the inhalation of sprayed paint fumes and even small debris from cutting or working on wood. Gloves used to protect the hands while working. And lastly, the apron used to protect the worker against flying debris and it is convenient as we can place our tools on the different pockets. And the last group of tools that we're going to learn is the driving tools, which includes the claw hammer, used to drive and pull out nails on wooden surfaces, the mallet, made out of wood or rubber, used to drive other tools like the chisel. Nail set was already discussed earlier, and it is part of the driving tools used in setting the head of a finished nail below the surface. And of course, lastly, the screwdriver, used to drive and to loose screws. Taking into consideration the things that we have learned in the classification of these tools, we should now be able to proceed with the procedures in segregating and labeling non-functional tools and equipment. Here are the steps. First, one must conduct an inventory of tools and equipment. We can remember, of course, that an inventory is a list of all available assets that a company has. Once we are done with the inventory, we can proceed with the next step. Record the number of non-functional tools and equipment. Be very observant of the characteristic of the tools and equipment that we have in order for us to tag them properly as functional or for replacement. Are they condemnable or can it still be repaired? Third, segregate tools that are serviceable or unserviceable. Fourth, report the number of tools and equipment that are non-functional but subject for repair. Number five, label tools and equipment 
which are condemnable. Again, when we say condemnable, these are the tools that are so worn out and damaged that it cannot be repaired anymore and is for disposal. And the last step, number six, return tools and equipment in the tool cabinet as per operating procedures. Now we have the procedures in checking the condition of personal protective equipment or PPE. As we all know, the PPE is very important in one's work. It serves as our primary protection from any form of debris or harmful objects that we might encounter while working. Here are the steps. First, inspect any damage or defective personal protective equipment. Second, test the functionality of each PPE. Make sure that the goggles are fine and you can see through it. Make sure that the earphones can really block off those noise. Third, separate non-functional and functional PPE. Fourth, repair or replace non-functional PPE. And lastly, report the condition or status of the PPE. We want to make sure that our fellow workers will be able to use the best kind of PPE available in order for the company to be on its best shape. And that ends our video lesson for today. I hope that you have learned something valuable that you can share to your family and friends. If you have any questions regarding this topic or would like to learn more about other related topics, please comment it down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Sir D. Have a great day everyone and I will see you in our next video lesson.